As I've mentioned before on this channel, I'm pretty much always on the lookout for movies which centre around the idea of a creature feature or some kind of real world animal, be it a predator or sometimes otherwise, that is presented in a way that shows at least a fraction of its true potential, sometimes even beyond its real world potential in the case of something like Jaws, where yes, sharks can do a lot of damage, but they don't tend to be that big, at least not in the modern age. Then you have others which go really over the top, but in a likeable kind of way, such as Lake Placid, which certainly isn't a great movie by any means, but I do love the fact that it exists, and I like that it's as good as it is, because it could have very easily been trash, as most of the other crocodile and alligator-based movies that I've seen unfortunately have been. This is another movie which could very easily swing either way. And this particular movie, called Shakma, which for some strange reason I always want to call Shakuma, is a movie which I paid more for from Amazon than I usually would. I believe it was like seven or eight pounds here in the UK, which for its age is a lot more than I would typically pay for a DVD, especially one which I don't know if it's going to be good or not. It's kind of a cult classic, but at the same time not really as much of a cult classic as some other creature features. It's certainly not a movie that I've heard ever recommended by anyone in the circles that I talk to. Even online, I haven't really seen it pop up at all, to be honest. I've heard movies like Baboon, that kind of thing, get talked about. I believe that's a movie. If it is, I haven't seen it. But this one, not so much. So what's the essential concept? Well, put simply, the concept is actually really good, I think. It keeps it simple, but at the same time, it makes use of the scenario to best effect within the obviously limited budget, because the story revolves around one high-rise building and a group of people in that building who are in the science field overall, and I can't recall exactly what their individual jobs therein were. I think some were interns, some were more senior members, but basically they did a little bit of an experiment on a certain baboon called Shakma. And this baboon had a connection to one of the guys there who didn't know that it was going to be experimented on. He'd been trying to train this baboon. So he was understandably upset when they'd done a little brain operation on this baboon, but it was sedated and the operation didn't go well, and so it was going to be put down. So they gave it this medication to put it down, but the medication wasn't the right one, and they weren't aware of this. So instead of killing Shakma, it made him real angry. And <laughs> given that baboons aren't exactly the most cheerful of primates initially, you can assume where it's going to go from there. And at the same time, what makes this problem of having this mad little baboon even better is that they've deliberately kept themselves in the building at night, when the vast majority of people are gone, to play a game. Quite a nerdy game, kind of like a, you could say a Dungeons and Dragons type thing in a high-rise building where they've turned the rooms into caves in effect and you use little trackers and all that kind of stuff to map where people are in the building and find clues, all that kind of stuff. And that's a cool idea for the film. It gives you a reason to be in the building after hours in the first place. It gives you a reason to have multiple people involved, but also at the same time for those people to not be together in a group. And I do like that, because too often in horror films, you have people splitting up from the group or going off on their own. This doesn't do that, and that's cool. It's justified that they're all on their own because they all want to win. So then you take that scenario, which is kind of a cool movie in itself in a totally different kind of genre, and then put this crazy little baboon in there, you've got yourself a pretty explosive mix. Now, the only thing I think that lets this movie down a little bit is the production quality. The camera work, not great. The sound quality, not great. Which for its age isn't too surprising, and again, for its budget isn't too surprising. But still, this is a prime example, I think, of a creature feature which could be done again better. Even if you did the exact same plot and the exact same story, but with different actors, you could make it better, I think, using modern methods. Not necessarily CGI, because that actually leads me on to possibly my favourite thing about this movie, and that is that they used a real baboon. Now, obviously, CGI wouldn't have really been an option back then, certainly not convincingly, but they could have easily had puppets all the time, or just showed the POV of the baboon rather than actually showing it, but they didn't do that. They show the baboon a lot, and although you don't see him 
fully shown to be attacking people. Of course you're going to obscure that kind of stuff, partially because he's a trained baboon at the end of the day. It was still really cool to see this probably really angry little baboon running down hallways after people. He probably didn't really know what he was doing, he was just doing what he was told for a treat. But in the movie, it works. And although I was surprised that the baboon wasn't quite as big as I was expecting it to be, it was about the size of, say, a smallish dog. I don't know if that's average for baboons, but I imagine them to be a bit bigger than that. Maybe the size of a small child, usually. This one isn't that big. But it still kind of works in a gremlins sort of way, that size of creature that can easily get around places without really being noticed and then latch onto your face, which isn't exactly what you want a baboon to do, but it's cool for that. Now, the things that it did do and didn't do well are fairly simple, because the whole concept of the film deliberately keeps it simple, it's all about the baboon, that's exactly what you want it to be, but at the same time I was surprised by how good the characters are. Now I'm not saying that the acting was great, but the design of the characters, the motivations, the way they interplay with each other is interesting. It was a lot better than it easily could have been actually. The acting is sometimes more TV movie than movie movie, if you know what I mean, but it wasn't bad. I've seen far worse, and to be honest, I expected this movie to be far worse. There were some faces in this movie which I have definitely seen elsewhere. Now, as far as scores, we're going to break it down, as always, and first of all, of course, we have the story and the plot. And for the story and plot, perhaps surprisingly, but at the same time perhaps not, I am actually going to give it a 5. And for those who are perhaps new to my rating system, a 5 out of 10 for me is a default score. That's what every movie should be, at least. Anything below a 5 means it's performing, of course, under par, and everything above that means it's doing better and better, with, of course, 10 being perfect. So, for me to give this one a 5 is pretty much the baseline. So, that pretty much describes what I think of the movie. It was good enough. It didn't do anything overly groundbreaking, not by today's standards anyway, I don't know about back then, but it certainly didn't underperform. The story was carried out in a good way, and the only real gripes I have in that regard tend to be more character-based rather than story-based, and those are two very different things that are commonly misinterpreted. A character can do something stupid and that will sometimes make people think that the story isn't as good, but that's not really the case. In this movie the characters aren't awful, and of course we'll get to that in just a second. Now overall, a 5 is a higher score than I was expecting to give it, so personally I'm actually happy with that for this movie. As far as the characters go, I am actually going to again surprise myself compared to what I went into the movie expecting by giving them a 6, because the characters are fairly realistic, they don't seem over the top, which for its age is a great thing, it very easily could be, and although some of the line delivery and some of the acting, but not too much, is a little bit over the top sometimes or a little bit off, for the most part I really enjoyed it actually from that point of view, the characters are interesting enough and you do want them to succeed and to survive. So hats off to the filmmakers and those involved for accomplishing that. That's more than you can say for a lot of other creature features, especially much newer ones. As far as the visuals go, I am going to give it a 4, which, as I mentioned earlier, is a little bit under par. And to be honest, the reason why I'm still giving it a 4, because it would usually be lower, is mainly due to the fact that the baboon is real. That really helps the score. Now there's only one scene where you get to really appreciate the baboon's gore, in effect. And even though you don't see gore, it's more blood, but it was cool to see, and it's a scene that's done with a puppet rather than a baboon. And you'll know the scene when you see it, it's towards the end of the movie. But for the rest of the time, it's more the production quality of the visuals, as I said earlier, the old school camera work, which lets it down a little bit by today's standards. Again, for its time, I might score it higher, but I've got to compare it to what's available now, because you can watch other movies if you want to. So, I'm going to give it a 4, which still isn't awful, it's just a little bit under par. As far as the audio, well again, pretty much for the exact same reason, I'm going to give it another 4, because it's a little bit muffled, which again for its age isn't surprising, no way near as bad as something like Son of the Blob, which is one of the worst audio experiences I've ever had in a movie. In fact, pretty much everything about that movie is one of the worst experiences I've ever had with a movie, especially given how good the other two movies are, but we'll get to that another time. Overall though, a 4 certainly isn't too bad. It's good enough in every way apart from being a little bit too muffled sometimes, so 
it's good enough for a movie of its age and its budget. And finally, of course, we have the story and the plots. And for the story and plot, I am going to give it another five, because this definitely isn't the kind of movie which I will watch over and over again. I've watched it once so far, a couple of days ago. I gave myself those couple of days to let it sink in, let me see what I thought of it. But the chances of me watching it again, I'd say, are fairly low. It wasn't a great movie. It, it wasn't... I would say a good movie for most people. I personally would say that it is. I think some people might find it a little slow, which I can understand. I didn't dislike that aspect of it. It kind of works. But the rewatchability isn't fantastic. This is a movie overall which I would recommend primarily to people who really enjoy finding the hidden gems of the creature feature, specifically the real world creature feature like lions, baboons, sharks, crocodiles, rather than aliens and monsters. If you're into that kind of thing, like Jaws, Lake Placid, The Ghost and the Darkness, those kind of movies, then I think there's a chance you might enjoy this one for what it offers. It won't necessarily be in your top five or your top ten, but it offers something. And that's interesting. And overall that means that I'm giving Shakma a score of 2.4 out of five, which doesn't sound that great and that is a little bit under par but overall I'm actually happy with that score because that pretty much mirrors exactly what I feel about the movie. It's a little bit under par. If you directly compare it to what can be done with movies today then it will not seem very good. If you think of it in the mindset of more back then and compare it to how many trash creature features there are, even newer ones with truly awful CGI, then you can genuinely enjoy it for being better than those, I would say. So it is worth a watch if that's the kind of movie that you're into. And overall, that's it for this particular pick. So I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.